it is so difficult to get away from the from from the news you know and kind of what's dominating uh, at the moment but there is there is something that um has been front of mind for me as i watch all of this unfold and it's a topic that we have spoken about many times before mm-hmm. and that is our relationship with the truth yeah it it seems like it is um it is a very optional thing these days what do you mean the truth so, is optional yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. truth is optional you know it seems like you know truth is just um uh, most of the time it's inconvenient um but one of the things that made me think about this was um i don't know it either had to do with uh, biden's resignation or trump's attempted assassination or whatever oh no no sorry it was well, you know it had to do with biden because they 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 said that he had COVID, mm-hmm. and that is why he was um not seen anywhere and then a couple of days later you know this um resignation or not not resignation but kind of the letter saying that he's not running for re-election yeah. came out and so on and then it was uh kind of made out to be that oh COVID, the COVID story may just have been a and i forget the word how they framed it it may just have been a cover mm-hmm. you know and i thought to myself you know well, you can call it whatever you like, but it's a blatant lie. Yeah. And I think, you know, there are so many other things. Um, and, and not just in American politics, but so many other things where we see people just willingly and knowingly lying to um, to advance their own cause. Yeah. So, I, f- I feel that's very dangerous. Yeah. I And I also think it relies on the general population, you and me, to do more research on everything that we hear. And I don't think that's what a lot of people do. So one of the things I was watching Benjamin Netanyahu in Congress yesterday and uh, watched a news interview afterwards with a panel where they were calling out some of the not necessarily lies, but just skirting around the truth a little bit that he was doing in his Congress, where he was getting the standing ovation from everyone. Um, Mm -hmm. And it was just interesting. It it was the same thing that happened. Was it with the, I think it was with Rishi Sunak and um, Keir Starmer debate, where when they talk about it afterwards, they were like, this was an untruth. But they talk about it with such gumption and such like conviction that you think oh it must be true and it just seems like the person who's the best orator is the person who wins in all of these situations even if they are not telling truths because people believe what they're saying blindly without doing any research or checking if what they're saying is true (laughs) so even the even the fact checkers because it seems like i haven't i haven't seen it myself but just what i see on on x uh when they talk about the fact checkers so if there's a like with a debate cnn had their own fact checker Mm -hmm. but then you also get people reporting that the fact checker was incorrect yeah in checking the facts so and then you sit in the and the debate becomes um well um person a told more lies than person b therefore person b but both are lying (laughs) yeah both are lying the fact that uh, person a beat person b by one or two lies doesn't make person b and you know it it is it it is so unhealthy and and i think we become so acclimatized to it we become so used to it that we start accepting these lies yeah all around us and everywhere that bugs me 
because it's going to come back and bite us in a horrible, horrible way. Yeah. The way that we, um, we, we do not want to address the, the, the realities or the truths in terms of what is happening in society. Yeah. And I think, I, I, I don't think it's in, incorrect or um, over-exaggerating to say that we have a, a worldwide crisis. Sure, there's a couple of countries that you can exclude from this. Where, but if you look at, um, um, I think if you go into Google now and you look for religious extremist clashes or whatever, you're going to kind of be able to pick from 20, 30 countries where the same stuff is happening at the moment. If you look at um, open borders or, my, you know, um, uh, what do they call themselves, refugees, you'll find that this is the same thing that kind of happens in 30, 40 countries. And that's why I'm saying that it is, you know, there are certain, certain truths and realities that we are not dealing with. Yeah. Oh, I don't want to deal with it. It doesn't <laughs> affect me. I'm sitting here nicely in my walled estate with security guards and whatever. Yeah. So I don't want to deal with it. So I'm not going to go and whatever. And I think that's how most of us feel. What can we do, though? Like be another protest group or, you know, like what, what, is, what, is, our, what are our options? <laughs> well, I think... Um, <laughs> yeah, let's go. Let's go pour orange paint over some <laughs> on Stonehenge <laughs> yes. to stop oil. <laughs> to stop oil. Oh yeah. But did you did you see the mother? The mother now saying, "Oh, you know, it's so unfair that she got four years prison sentence because she's going to miss her brother's wedding. That is so <laughs> terrible." Anyway, so so what can we do? I I think the most important thing that we can do is is to speak up. Yeah. Just to speak up because if, you know, the longer we are silent in our, I don't know, in our, in our own um, social and work settings about these things it it actually means that they they are getting away with more and more of it you know you know how it worked in 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 communist russia just like nobody spoke up nobody said yeah. anything okay well, because, because it they could would get, get you into serious Locked trouble. up or killed. <laughs> so don't you think that we are on our way there? Yeah. So actually, I was listening to a Joe Rogan podcast yesterday and he, uh, well, his guest, I can't remember, it's some comedian, I can't, can't remember, remember his name, but was talking about a woman who wrote a book about Putin um, and then got locked up after the book was published for something unrelated, for making negative comments about the military or something like that. Um, but uh, they were just talking about how brave is this woman to write a book about Putin. <laughs> yes. So, look, if you go back into to history in terms of, you know, um, Stalin and, you know, how things work there, um, it's, it, it's horrible. It's because nobody had the guts to speak up. Yeah. Now, obviously, they had the military to enforce. But even there, you know, why did the military actually enforce these things, which were so blatantly terrible? Uh, because they were also afraid. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I, I don't think it's, it's far-fetched to say that we have to be careful because we are moving in that direction. So anyway, so that is the one thing that I think we can do, is speak up. Mm -hmm. Speak up whenever you... Do you mean just among your friends on a just podcast? Just among your friends. 
<laughs> just among your friends, your colleagues, wherever. Yeah. And I think it's important. I'm not saying take a political stand. I don't really care about your politics. You know, it doesn't matter, whatever. But I think if we stop, if we if we um, continue to to treat the truth like an inconvenience, yeah, that is a problem. So, and that's what I mean by speak up. You know, when you yeah. hear people blatantly. Okay, so very good example is men can get pregnant. <laughs> Okay. And it's bullshit. It's absolute bullshit. Yeah. And yet we are forced to go along with it and say, yeah, okay, cool. That's, that's okay. You know, it, it's never, ever going to happen yeah. naturally, at least anyway. So there are lots of these examples and I think anybody in a, I don't know, friends, work, etc. You come across these things where uh, people are not truthful. So I'm not saying that you have to be uh, a dick about it, but stop pointing these things out. Yeah. If you have an opinion about the, um, you know, the protests that are happening pro this and anti that and so on, be comfortable to share your opinion and your thoughts with other people. Truthful thoughts yeah. on these things. And then obviously, hopefully listen to other people's viewpoints and be prepared to change your mind about yeah. Because otherwise we are just being forced into a one-way street. Yeah. There was another good example actually of that on the podcast I was listening to yesterday. Uh, this comedian, he's been around for 14 years or something. Anyway, when he was a young comedian, he made a rape joke. Like it was like a five second little one liner that he made and lots of comedians make rape jokes. Yeah. Like, um, and at the time, this woman tried to cancel him on Twitter and all of the stuff for making a rape joke. And he, he well, he luckily survived that attempt at a cancellation early in his career. But um, recently, he's gone big, although I don't know his name. So I, I sound bad to say <laughs> that. <laughs> Um, it's on the American circuit. Uh, his name is Sam Morrill. Okay. Um, so, so then he had one of his shows up on YouTube or one of his sets or something up on YouTube. And this person from 14 years ago commented, this comedian's awful, like cancel him. He made a rape joke 14 years ago. But the funny thing, the, the, the anecdote of that story is that this person who was a woman 14 years ago is now a man. So oh it has changed. And I think Sam Morrill's point was, okay, so you're allowed to change, but I'm not <laughs> yes. like that. I was, I was young. Yes. Maybe it was an out of taste joke, but I'm not the same person I was 14 yeah. years ago. And clearly you're not the same person you were 14 years ago. So like, can you not just give me grace that maybe I've changed in 14 years? <laughs> Because she wasn't, or he wasn't commenting on the latest set. He was commenting on a joke that he made five many years ago. Anyway, it was just funny. <laughs> you mean she? Yeah. You mean she? <laughs> uh, anyway, that poor person <laughs> should be forced to watch every single video of... Um, Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy Carr. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, or Ricky Gervais. I mean. <laughs> Exa exactly, you know, yeah. because, um, you know, they actually go out of their way. Yeah. To get this point across about this is comedy. Yeah. 
yeah. may not be to your liking or whatever, but do you understand that if I make a joke like that, that is not who I am and that is not the type of thing yes. that I'm doing? I'm, yeah. Well, anyway. the, the irony was um, that his latest tour or set or whatever that he had put up was actually quite pro trance. Like he said in the podcast, he was kind of taking a different stance because everyone's going into the trance thing. And he was using it from a different angle and kind of being positive trance in a way. And then this trance person tries to cancel him for something from anyway. <laughs> yeah, correct. Um... I didn't. I didn't watch the um, the speech that Netanyahu made or anything or whatever. I just saw this morning that uh, he did a comment about um, gays for Gaza being <laughs> so equivalent like to chickens. chickens for KFC. You know, <laughs> that didn't um, get the applause because I watched the whole thing and he oh, kept getting won't get the standing applause. ovations and applause for a lot of the things he was saying about pro-Israel, about um, the Jews, it's their land, all of that. He was getting lo loads of applause. But yeah. that joke, it, he, he like kind of said it in a stand-up way as a joke, and it didn't get the same <laughs> stand-up and applause as everything else. I just thought maybe it was like of course wrong not. crowd and not the right context. <laughs> No, I bet you <laughs> People on the scared. inside, they all clapped like hell because it is so true. I mean, it's, it's not that they even trying to deny it or to say that that is not the case. Yeah. You know, that is exactly how they, yeah. anyway. So that's, a, that's another good example for me of people not appreciating the truth enough. Mm. Because they're just trying to be politically correct by not applauding that. Yeah. I cannot believe that all of the participants didn't find that uh, funny yeah. or a worthy analogy or, you know. We, I when, mean, he gave context. He did, like, before that, he had explained, like, what these like what Sharia law is and what like some of the you know some of these things are and then he made the joke but uh, it just didn't land very well in the... <laughs> I suppose Do you think it would have it's, I think, it's think it would have just... landed better if he said it's the same like Jews for Hitler <laughs> if it, I don't know it, I almost think it was because it was a, a joke just because of the way that he said it chickens for KFC um, and it wasn't a comic set it was like a serious it was meant to be a serious thing and mm. i don't think people were expecting there to be jokes you know they were they okay. were behind him for the support of israel but uh not for making jokes about people i don't know but i don't know if you know like i think there were like 50 democrats who didn't attend didn't in you, protest yeah, yeah. and there were a yes. few democrats who were in attendance who stayed seated the whole time and didn't applaud um which i think is quite difficult when some of the things should clearly be applauded like they like there's certain things that even if you don't agree with the war there are certain like absolute truths that you should support mm. him saying and Anyway, I don't, yeah. <laughs> well, I think, I think in that case, you know, it's a question of the orders from above. Mm -hmm. Your boss says, you go to the conference, you do not applaud. Yeah. You know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know enough of how it works, but it does feel like, you know, out of a huge audience like that, nobody claps. You know, it's like, okay, cool. It's just politically good. Anyway, that was my little bit um, about, uh, you know, I feel like we, we have to, we have to really um, celebrate truth. Um, as I, as I've been saying for, for many, many years, but I just feels like it's worth highlighting again, looking at what's going on around us. Yeah. I know it's, very clear now in today's world that there are a lot of untruths but i also want to just highlight that it's been like that for forever um again i'm going back to this podcast just because i listened to it yesterday and joe rogan is very topical about what's going on in the world 
but he was talking about the assassination attempt on Trump and then he brought up the John F. Kennedy assassination and that there were so many lies in that yes. and where that came from and we'll never know the truth about that and I wonder if we'll ever know the truth about what happened with the Donald Trump assassination. Um, he, he was talking about the shooter and how like perhaps he wasn't saying this is his theory but he said what what like there's a possibility that the shooter could have been hired by intelligence agency um trained and then you know that he's going to get killed in all of everything happening and that's it like there's no leads back yeah. to anyone there's um but it sounded a bit like the doug casey novels <sighs> with just the things going on in the background and you think it could be yeah. something like that. <laughs> 100%. Uh, yeah. I just listened to Doug Casey the other day saying that, uh, you know, yeah, okay, cool, because these people are asking about when's the next one coming out. And he says it's, you know, very, very difficult to stay ahead of yeah. the truth, you know, because these are supposedly fiction books. <laughs> but the, the the reality is catching up with fiction faster than they can pre produce the uh, has, the fiction. Has he given any kind of indication when it's coming out? Because I'd love to read it. <laughs> um, yeah, I think he said next year because because okay. because he doesn't write it. You know, John John Hunt, John Hunt yeah. was the actual writing. Doug is the kind of like concept story, you know, Consultant. high level, <laughs> etc. Yeah. And, and so on, you know. But look, I, I I fully agree with you that that this is not a new thing that we're dealing with this manipulation of truth. Um, and it's a very, very valid one that you that you pointed out there, you know, the John F. Kennedy assassination. But there are a whole bunch of other things. And I think we can also go back way, way, way further in history where we find a hell of a lot of lying and manipulating. And, and that is part of humanity, I think. So I'm trying to remember now, what do psychologists say about when does a child learn to lie? Oh, very young, I think. <laughs> Well, very, very young, but but around about four years, I think. Yeah, because because you know the, the most dangerous thing to let loose in a conversation is a three-year-old with a very good <laughs> command oh, yeah, of, of the language. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they'll they'll tell you if they think you you're fat or e ugly or <laughs> exactly, exactly. So yeah. you know, yeah, um, children and drunk people, only ones that really. No. But anyway, it's it's fascinating to think about and and how do they learn to lie? Mm -hmm. How do kids learn to lie? It's the first time that Johnny calls Auntie Edna fat and mommy takes him aside and says, listen, it is not nice to say that. Yeah. Yes, but mommy, she is. Yes, I know, <laughs> but it's not nice to say that. Yeah. So, so in other words, it's learned behavior. Yeah. And they learn it from the parents. They learn it from the adults. We send them off to kindergarten and they um, they are told not to say this or that to a friend or one of the other kids. So they get it from all around them. So we teach them. So 100% it is something that is not new. But that doesn't mean that it's an excuse for us to start lying more. Yeah. Where's uh, the quote? I just want to read it out and maybe encourage everyone to read, even though he's uh, not not popular anymore. Sam Harris is lying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I just want to find that quote. Yeah, got it. Lying is almost by definition a refusal to cooperate with others. It condenses a lack of trust and trustworthiness into a single act. It is both a failure of understanding and an unwillingness to be understood. To lie is to recoil from relationship. I just think that that's a very, very powerful well said. Quote. Yeah. 
Jeez, I wish we can get that Sam Harris back. Not this <laughs> loony tunes. I we... actually haven't followed since that Sam Harris, so I don't really know what's gone on with him. Um, is, is it all the, uh, was it the predestination kind of stuff, predeterminism? No, no, he's, um, he, he's, uh, there was a, he got into some Twitter arguments when it was still called Twitter, mm -hmm. uh, you know, because he was very much pro-vaccine and uh, you must do whatever Fauci says you must do. Okay. And then also um, with with Trump, with, with Hunter Biden, uh, and that sort of thing, you know, when, when it came out, he, he made some off-color comment on the Trigonometry podcast. Um, when they asked him about that, he said he doesn't care if uh, Biden has, I don't know, bodies in the basement or Hunter has, it's something like that. But it was like really serious, Sam Harris, you saying that, you know. But he was so freaked out that people cannot vote for the Democrats. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter what they do. Um, killing other people, etc., is still better than even thinking about voting for the other party. Okay. Um, and that really got him in trouble. And um, I haven't really seen him recover. I watched one or two interviews since then where he and Eric Weinstein, because he also got into uh, Brett Weinstein had quite a lot to say and he wouldn't engage despite the uh, invitations and so on. But the trigonometry guys, actually, when they were in the, in the States, beginning of this year, maybe towards the end of last year, they actually got Eric and Sam Harris to participate in a conversation, okay. um, which was not bad. But yeah, he's not the same guy. But that is a phenomenal quote there. That yeah. is a phenomenal quote there. And, and, and that really, I think, it sums up very well how I feel about we should be able to, to speak our truth, not in a nasty and an ugly way, but to encourage conversation yeah. and broadening our horizons and our minds um, in terms of our understanding of whatever subject it is. I like it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank <Okay>. you, man. <laughs> Thanks, Ali.